you are watching CNBC TV 18. With us right now is the Managing Director and CEO of the Mahindra Group, Mr. Anish Shah. Mr. Shah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you have been focusing a lot on your growth gems. Let me start by asking about Mahindra Sastin. Uh, Ontario Teachers is set to acquire 30% stake for 2,371 crores. What was the strategy and what are these uh, proceeds likely to be prioritized for? So good morning, Parikshit. Uh, great to be here with you today. Uh, this is actually a very exciting step forward for us. Ontario Teachers is one of the most respected pension funds around the world. Uh, they will bring a wealth of knowledge in renewables that will help us build this business. Mm -hmm. The objectives for us were to really establish Sustain as one of the top players in renewables in India. Mm -hmm. There is a huge market opportunity. Um, our Prime Minister has also talked about renewables being 50% of mm -hmm. energy production. Uh, by 2030 and therefore we feel that Sustain is very well positioned in this space. Mm. It does require capital mm. and in the context of our capital allocation approach uh, we have talked about growing growth gems but also partnering with large marquee global investors in doing so mm. and therefore this is one where it meets the objective of us partnering with the marquee investor, mm. helping us grow the business further mm. and allowing the capital to come in, mm. uh, which then puts us on a faster path of growth mm. and better returns. So it's a combination of all of those Any things. Any key projects that uh, you would like to uh, focus on in the near term when it comes to Mahindra Sustain? So there are multiple projects that we will bid for as we have been bidding. Uh, Sustain actually is a business today uh, which did both EPC as well as mm. development. We've mm. done more than five gigawatt and uh, the plan is to really take this at, at a different level. Uh, we've typically been bidding on uh, a large number of projects and that will continue. Right. Uh, just to also ask you about uh, plans for other IPOs. In November 2021, you had said that in two years you'll come out with the next IPO. Uh, have you identified any of your growth gems for an IPO, for a listing? Yes. So to clarify first, two to four years, we've been very careful about what we commit and make sure we deliver what we commit. Uh, we are on track uh, for uh, multiple businesses to be on a very good growth path as part of our growth gems. Mm. And uh, there are two or three businesses that we will look at bringing to IPO in that time period. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a little more work that needs to be done to make sure that they're really strong businesses when they come to the public market. Right. Uh, would you like to tell, them about, uh, tell us about those three, three four businesses? Uh, not at this time, but we'll come back with more details on that. Okay. Now, there have been a lot of reports about Mahindra Group looking to separate its automotive business into three parts. Will the EV, tractor and passenger vehicle businesses become standalone entities in order to unlock value? So at this stage, the step we've taken with the EV co being separate mm. uh, is really the primary step. There are no plans in, in the short or medium term to look at any further separations as such. Mm. Uh, and we believe that with the new EV company that we are setting up with an investment from British International Investments, uh, will really be a company that takes uh, electric to the next level. Right. Uh, is Pin and Farina likely to be clubbed with the EV project, with the EV company? Uh, at this stage, we're not looking at clubbing Pin and Farina with it. Mm -hmm. I think Pin and Farina operates in a very different market mm -hmm. uh, with a different segment mm -hmm. and uh, it does well at what it does. Right. Uh, just to ask about uh, deploying additional capacity. Uh, when we spoke to you on the 15th of August, you said that your immediate priority would be to deploy additional capacity for the Scorpio, for the XUV700 and the Thar. Uh, what about acquiring the Taligao plant? Mahindra Group was in initial talks with General Motors. Where have things reached? So we, are, we continue to be in talks there as well as look at various options. For us, capacity creation is not as much about the plant. Mm -hmm. Our truck and plant has the ability to expand and be able to put in more lines. Mm -hmm. It's about getting the entire supply base mm -hmm. uh, ready to be able to generate a lot more capacity for us. We're not looking at a 20-30% capacity increase. Mm -hmm. We're looking at far greater than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and plans are set. Things are underway at this point. Mm -hmm. We will be sharing it publicly once we have some of the uncertainties taken out. Uh, because but this is at existing plants. Uh, Existing plants have lines, so as I said, expanding capacity is not an issue with our existing plants. Yeah. Expanding capacity has to be done in conjunction with all the suppliers. Mm. Uh, they have got to put in extra lines, they've got to put in uh, investments, get the machining tools in. So once all of that happens, that allows us to take uh, capacity to the next level. But either acquiring Taligao or uh, Ford's plant mm. in uh, Tamil Nadu, that mm. remains on the table as an option? Uh, so. 
it's not essential for us to acquire plants to do this at this point. Mm. So while we will continue looking at various options, that, that's not the gating factor for capacity expansion for us. That's more a longer term plan. Okay. Because we will need beyond the set of capacity that, that we need right now, we will need more capacity for our EVs when it, once it comes in. All right. So those are longer term options beyond that. Right. Uh, at this point in time, our capacity expansion is not contingent on acquiring any plants. Okay. Uh, how geared up are you for the festive season production? What is the current capacity utilization? 100%. We have huge demand, as you know, across all our models. And therefore, our capacity is fully utilized. Mm. And uh, we are expanding capacity. We may have some of that in. Uh, in the next few months, but then more in a few months before beyond that. Will this demand sustain mm. itself beyond the festive season? Uh, at this stage, if you look at the XV700, we've been getting 10 to 11,000 bookings for mm. the last year. Mm. So mm. it's one that uh, is really driven by the product. Mm. Similar with the Scorpio N, mm. we had, as you know, 1 lakh bookings in the first 30 minutes, mm. and there continues to be very high demand for that, which again is driven by the product. Mm. So is it with the Thar, with the XV300. Mm. So we don't see this demand uh, going down. Mm. In fact, as we put in more capacity, we would likely see it going up because we can serve the capacity or we can serve the demand faster. Mm. Today, the challenge we have and, and the, the one thing that we are unhappy about is we can't meet customer demand as quickly as we'd like to. Mm. Uh, that's what we need to address. Right. Uh, the, the pressure of high raw material costs, especially steel, uh, iron ore, rubber, there has mm. been some cooling off in prices. Uh, do you think uh, Things are coming under control, the prices are stabilizing, commodity prices are stabilizing, or would there be more uh, price hikes in the offing in the coming few months? We have seen some stability on that front, mm. uh, though we do continue to be concerned with the inflation worries around the world, mm. uh, because India is not going to be left out of that. Mm. We also feel that the government actually has taken a number of proactive steps, and which is why we see a greater level of stability in India today. Mm. Uh, you know, I'd also like to ask you about your uh, continuous focus on cost efficiencies amid this challenging global uh, economic environment. Where do you think uh, India is with regard to inflation? Uh, is this the peak or you think that uh, things could get worse in the days to come? What are the major headwinds that you see for the Indian economy? So India is today positioned much better than the rest of the world. Mm. The increase in inflation in India mm. is 150 to 200 basis points as compared to a much higher increase we see in mm. many of the developed markets. Mm. That has been a factor of proactive actions, both in terms of rate hikes by the RBI, in terms of addressing some of the input costs by a variety of measures. Mm. And based on that, we do feel that that stability will likely remain, mm. unless we see much greater inflation around the world. Mm. Uh, we also see the US Fed and various other central banks Focused on this as a huge topic, we will likely see higher rates mm -hmm. in many countries. Um, and if that's done aggressively, mm -hmm. that will help keep the world in control, mm -hmm. which will help India. Mm -hmm. The other factor here is crude oil prices. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at oil prices, they have gone up, they've uh, stabilized again to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's going to be a key factor in, in driving where India goes as well. Right. Uh, my final set of questions, which are some of your other businesses which are likely to post strong growth? Uh, what about Mahindra Logistics, Mahindra Holidays? Any other areas, any other sectors where you expect the companies to deliver strong growth in this fiscal? So today, we have all our businesses firing on all cylinders. Mm. So if we look at auto, we talked about that great momentum. Our farm business continues to do very well uh, with growth drivers and farm machinery and global as well. Uh, Mahindra Finance is on a very strong recovery path. Tech Mahindra is... Uh, taking advantage of many of the tailwinds behind it uh, and addressing some of the issues around margin that we need to address there. Holidays, life spaces, logistics, uh, all doing very well. Uh, life spaces business actually hit a billion dollars of market cap uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So one of our first growth gems to hit that mark. Uh, and many of our other growth gems will be hitting that mark in the next two to four years. So maybe Mahindra Life Spaces would be the first for an IPO. Uh, life spaces is public actually. Public, public. Uh, so yeah. the, some of the unlisted entities will come up uh, for IPO as well. Yeah. But we wanted to get three of our public entities, life spaces, logistics, and holidays, also to the one billion mark. So right. we've started on that journey. Okay. And my final question mm -hmm. on electric vehicles: You recently launched the XUV uh, E400. Mm -hmm. What has been the response in terms of bookings? And we've also mm -hmm. seen Tata Motors now announcing an affordable EV, mm -hmm. which would be less than 13 lakhs. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that uh, Mahindra would also consider, maybe an affordable EV as a next option? Or would you go with the roadmap of 
the five, six cars that you've showcased? So the response we've got is fantastic so far. We haven't started bookings as yet. Uh, so once we start booking, we'll see. But uh, the XUV 400 is best in class in a very large number of areas. Right. Uh, so we do expect uh, that to really garner a fair degree of demand. All right. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Mr. Shah. Okay, that is...